as one sign that the Utah Jazz are an up-and-coming team in the NBA, head coach Quinn Snyder, defensive anchor Rudy Gobert and budding superstar Donovan Mitchell will be in contention to receive the league's coach of the year, defensive player of the year and rookie of the year honors, respectively, on Monday night at the second annual NBA Awards show in Santa Monica, California. Among the 18 finalists for six different awards related to play on the court voted on by media before the playoffs began, the three finalists from the Jazz market tie for the most from one team. The Houston Rockets, which finished the regular season with by far the best record in the NBA, also have three. Awards for Most Valuable Player, Sixth Man of the Year and Most Improved Player will also be handed out Monday, as will Teammate of the Year, the NBA Sportsmanship Award, Executive of the Year, Lindsay is thought to be in contention, the Community Assist Award, Jazz Point Guard Ricky Rubio is a finalist, and the Fan Voted Play of the Year. The show begins at 7 p.m. MDTN can be seen on TNT. Here's a rundown of what to expect particularly as it relates to the awards with finalists from Utah, Coach of the Year. After a 19-28 start, the Jazz went an incredible 29-6 over the final 35 games of the regular season and earned the fifth seed in the Wild Western Conference playoffs, which served as a catalyst for Snyder's candidacy. The lone coach from the West to be a finalist, Snyder is thought to be a long shot to win. In what could be the most awkward point of the night Monday, Dwayne Casey is considered the frontrunner. Casey led Toronto to the best record in the Eastern Conference, but was fired after the Raptors were swept by Cleveland in the playoffs and was subsequently hired to lead Detroit. Boston coach Brad Stevens is the other finalist, and would likely be the frontrunner if the award took the playoffs into account. Defensive Player of the Year, it's widely thought that this will finally be the year Gobert is named the NBA's top defender. Despite missing 26 games during the regular season because of injury, the Frenchman still finished fourth in the NBA in total blocks but other stats are where many feel as though he's sealed the award. Opponents shot 10% worse at the rim when Gobert was in the game, and Utah's overall defensive rating, 101.6, wound up being second in the league and just a tenth of a point off the lead, Boston. That's after it was 104.6, 14th in the league. During the first 11-game stretch Gobert was absent in an awful 111.9, 27th in the league. During the next 15-game stretch he was out. Gobert's return to the lineup for good on January 19th coincided with a Jazz's ridiculous run from January 22nd until the end of the regular season. Philadelphia's Joel Embiid and New Orleans' Anthony Davis's best argument for winning the award is that Gobert missed so much time, but Embiid missed 19 games during the regular season and Davis wasn't as impactful overall despite leading the league in blocks. Rookie of the Year, certainly the most hotly contested of the awards, the seemingly endless argument about whether or not Mitchell or Philadelphia's Ben Simmons should win will finally be put to bed. Mitchell undoubtedly has a good argument, as he led Utah in scoring en route to the playoffs, a rare feat for a rookie. Such is even more impressive when one considers the difficulty of the West comment on this story that being said, the prevailing thought is that Simmons will win. Of course there is the debate about whether or not the Aussie should even be eligible given that this was his second year in the NBA after he missed his entire first campaign because of injury, but reshirt rookies, have won in the past. Once one gets past that, Simmons' overall stat line was impressive, as he averaged 15.8 points, 8.2 assists and 8.1 rebounds per game over the course of the regular season. Boston's Jason Tatum is the other finalist and had an impressive playoff run, although his regular season was overshadowed by Simmons and Mitchell.